Hello, I'm Darren Slack. Welcome to week two of NFA's QB Cast, a pregame prep talk podcast for helping everyone associated with game day to get better. We hope to use these targeted topic podcasts to provide perspectives that prepare you to perform your best on the field, on the sideline, or wherever you find yourself in the stadium on game day. We are NFA Nation. We want to set your thermostat for your next big game. You see, for many, last week was a warm-up, a scrimmage, a half game, or a jamboree. These next two weeks will count against your record. The initial hitting and nerves are over, and it's time to make your run to greatness. As a leader and a member of this team, your contribution on week two must be to maximize execution, manage emotions. First, let's talk about maximizing your execution. Simply put, execution is doing what your position is required to do on the next play. If you could take a play off, then the entire team pays the price. We can't let that happen. Consider this for a second. If a play lasts six seconds and you're in on 60 of them on one side of the ball, you play every down. That's a total time of 360 seconds or just six minutes. That's how long your entire game lasts. It may take a few hours to play the entire game, but even if you play both ways and some special teams, that's roughly only 12 minutes. On one side of the ball, roughly six minutes of effort, six seconds at a time, 60 times, we can do that. So here's how we maximize each six second moment. You gotta know it, see it, do it. Know it is to memorize your plays. Go through them with mental repetition over and over again. Take time each day to review anything new you learned. If you have time and a little bit of space, walk through it after practice or at home. Do this every day by calling the play and visualizing where your players should be around you and execute the required action. Any new skills you're learning for those plays must be repped in a similar way. You gotta know your stuff. Next, you gotta see it. Get 15 minutes alone with your play sheet on game day. Visualize your assignment on every play and your response to the different looks you're gonna face. Close your eyes, go to the event in your mind. Run the entire play as it should look through your eyes. If a call or a check needs to be made with the looks you're creating, make the check out loud to see yourself change as it should happen on the field. Then, if you're really good, see if you can observe the play outside yourself, like watching a video of yourself doing the play the proper way. This second, more difficult step of mental repetition forces the brain to understand what you want it to do and how you want it to look doing it on film. Third, you want to do it. Once you get the moment, you simply need to act. We can't be tentative in our execution. We must explode with confidence. Heading into the line of scrimmage, we recall the visualization just prior to the snap, Take a deep breath, calm yourself, and go. Once you go, you must not doubt. Don't second guess yourself, there's no hesitation. Make it your goal to make great plays every play, not just once in a while. You do this by not trying to score, or strive not to make a mistake. Take each play and moment as its own, and be all in in that moment. Stand in there and take the hit when you make the throw. Break one more tackle when you're running the ball. Shed that fourth block on your way to the ball carrier. Finish strong. All right, let's talk about managing your emotions. Men aren't the best at dealing with emotions because we don't understand them. Guys tend to build up emotions and bury them in their backyard hoping they won't surface anywhere, especially on game day. But football is like a backhoe with a bad attitude. It digs up your backyard sometimes and uncovers emotional attitudes and actions we really don't want seen. Football is an emotional game that cannot be denied or ignored. We have to manage our emotions as they present, not bury them. So, in order to manage our emotions, we need to do it through four disciplines. We call these the pillars of the NFA C4 message. Confidence, character, consistency, and commitment. So how do we manage our emotions through confidence? Well, confidence is your beliefs. Emotions are attached to what we believe about ourselves, our coaches, our teammates, and our opponents. Nervousness and anxiety is directly connected to the level of confidence you have and your belief you have in your preparation, yourself, and your teammates. It's not bravado smack talk, or acting out wildly to show confidence that matters. It's a firm resolve that knows you've done enough to be ready and that you're good with whatever happens. Confidence tends to waver when we're worried about looking good. We're fearful about how others may see us or making a mistake. Turn those self-serving thoughts around by thinking about serving your teammates, giving the great effort for them on every play, and being willing to do whatever it takes for them to succeed, just like you said you always would. By taking your mind off of your fears of failure and putting it on how we intend to sacrifice for others, we can sustain our confidence because we're more concerned with keeping our promise than protecting our performance. If you're really struggling with your confidence, here's what you do. Talk to yourself more than you listen to yourself. 
Our inner voice isn't a very good teammate sometimes. You need your will to step up and remind your emotions out loud how things are going to be. Not rah-rah speeches about your impending success, but reminding your anxious heart about the truths that matter most. This isn't about you. It's about your team and how you intend to serve them. This kind of self-talk is driven by our character, which is the second pillar of the process. Character is so important because in, in young men, emotions are deep, and football is very important to us. We can't ignore our emotions but we must engage our character to manage them. Character is your convictions about how you're going to perform, treat others, and compete. It's your non-negotiables that act as guardrails for your emotions to be expressed appropriately and in a timely fashion on game day. Here's a few character-driven non-negotiables we need in setting boundaries for our emotions on game day. Number one, we got to focus. Because you're pumped up emotionally, you can tend to get keyed up faster than usual. So you need to have a long fuse of patience until game time. The way to do that is focus. Don't let inane foolishness and actions of others distract you. Remember what matters is the team, not you getting all you want right now. Deal with the other issues another time. It's not about you. It's about being dependable to arrive prepared to play for your brothers. So we need to focus. Number two, we need to forgive. Keep your account short toward others and toward yourself. Don't give real estate in your head to people who haven't earned it. Don't think about people who aren't important to what you have to do. Bite the urge to allow negative emotions to surface from those who frustrate you. Playing anger will only last a few plays, but playing with love for your brothers will give you energy that lasts the whole game. And the third one, you need to forget. If you find you made a mistake, you're simply being reminded that you're human. But real champions recover at full speed on the next play. Play through your failure. Don't play with it. Brooding over mistakes is pointless. Press on. And if you, you do happen to make a great play, well, you handle that just like you shampoo your hair every day. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> Unfortunately, in a highly emotional game, we may have to do this process quite a bit with the ups and downs, which requires the third pillar, consistency. That's being the same person no matter what happens to the team. Our approach and attitude toward game day must reflect all that we're discussing consistently. Dependability is a critical attribute of leadership, and that is shown through your consistency. Consistent execution, consistent emotional state. Leaders must not lose their cool in any situation simply because others are losing theirs. Losing it doesn't show you care more than others, it shows you aren't handling the pressure as well as others. That's all it does. When you're trying to be consistent, here's a couple of things you need to do. You need to lower your expectations of the outcome of the game. Increase your effort in each play to do your part. You can't win or lose a game by yourself. But by not giving your best effort emotionally, that will influence the outcome negatively. And that's where consistency fails. We need to be mature in the moment. See, maturity is right decisions under pressure. Maturity is grown through experience and our fourth point, or our fourth pillar, commitment. And that's what we got to talk about next. Commitment. In order for confidence, character, consistency to thrive in our emotional state, we must commit ourselves to the higher purpose of the team and its needs above our own at all times. We must engage from a deeper place than our emotions. You must assert your will. The will oversees everything associated with the emotions. We need to will our execution and our effort, especially when we're tired, anxious, or frustrated. Mental and emotional toughness is demonstrated through a commitment of the will to do what others won't so that your teammates can get what they need. You don't always feel like it, but we're not operating on feeling. We're willing ourselves through this process. Commitment is total and it's moment by moment. It's total in that we're bringing every resource we have in our hearts and minds to bear to help us win the game. It's a moment by moment in that we apply that high energy each and every play to serve the team. Emotional management is a decision, not a feeling. It's a war in the mind of a man to make others and their needs more important than our own. Every step of the way. If we can get an entire team to think that way, we have a shot to do special things together. Do your part to maximize execution by knowing it, seeing it, and doing it. Manage your emotions through confidence sustained by servant leadership, not self-preservation. Manage them through character-based convictions to focus, forgive, and forget. Be consistent in your attitude and effort and make the commitment from your will at all times to keep your promise. Let the performance take care of itself. You do that and great things will happen. We wish you the best of luck this weekend, NFA Nation. We believe in you. Make sure you keep us posted on how you're doing it at all of our social media stops on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you next week.